was after the Revolutionary War, after we had gained our independence, we were a new nation. Well, these 12 men met in this cabin, and six of them, they decided that they were going to take out, in our area, we were about half and half pro-British, pro, you know, revolution. So they said they were mad, and they were going to take it out on the two men that were most responsible for them losing their uh, country, they thought, and for us, the Americans, gaining our independence. And they decided they'd take it out on two men. These were the two patriots that were most responsible. So six of them went to one log cabin, six of them went to the other log cabin, and they assassinated these two men. Our description in our, in our history book says one of them was shot through the head as he read, read in front of his open fireplace. He fell to the floor and his blood ran back into the earth of the dirt floor of the log cabin. Well, their colonel that had led them into battle over at Guilford Courthouse, and the reason they were assassinated and picked out was they raised all the armies down it on the Yadkin River, High Rock Lake, Rowan County, actually too, over at Salisbury, and all down in that area. They raised the armies of schoolboys, uh, old men, everybody you could think of with squirrel rifles and everything. They marched over to Guilford Courthouse to meet up with General Green and do battle with General Cornwallis. General Cornwallis had a seasoned bunch of folks, I mean, soldiers, there were about 8,600 troops that were just crack troops. And he had 800 Hessians that were worse than probably anybody else has ever fought. They, were, they took it out on the local folks pretty bad. Well, we only had about 2,600 troops. We went over there and we got our rear ends whooped badly over at Guilford Courthouse. And, but we, and we lost the battle, but we won the war because General Cornwallis left 2,600, supposedly, on the field, either wounded or, or killed. And he went, he got to the coast, but the, the Battle of Guilford was the last major battle of the Revolutionary War. So we lost the battle, but we won the war. He got to the coast, he got to Yorktown, Washington came in on the land side, the French finally made, made it in and on ships on the, on the water. General Cornwallis gave up. So these men were single out in the United States for why they the main reason that they lost the battle. Because if we hadn't won, if we hadn't done that in, at Guilford Courthouse, it may have been a different story. They were taken by their, I'm trying, I can't tell this short. They were taken by their friend, their dearest friend, and the colonel that led all these guys in the battle. They were taken up to Pilgrim Church, which is right up above where we live, about three miles from where we live. One of them had given the property for the church and had built the church for the Pilgrim Church. They were taken up there and the grave was dug, a common grave. They were buried side by side. After they were buried, two men as one soul. He gave the eulogy, these two men who have lived together, worked together, fought together, died together, we buried together as one soul, as is our nation because of. That's on their the gravestone today, still up there after all these years. He said after that, he said, he, well, let me, let me tell you one more thing. One of them's name was Woolrich Fritz. The other one's name was Valentine Linhart, which is Leonard. Leonard Linhart is German for Leonard. Woolrich Fritz is my wife's Great, 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 great grandfather. Valentine Linhart is my great, 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 great grandfather. And those two souls got together, and my children and my grandchildren. And we don't take that lightly. And that's what I think is all behind all of this love and affection and respect for where we are and where we live 
at least in my part. The story didn't even end there. <laughs> the, cur the colonel got on his horse and he said, anybody want to go with me, I'm going to find the men that did this deed if it takes me the rest of my life. They went all the way down into South Carolina, down near Georgetown, found the last of the 12 men. Because a lot of them joined him and went down there. Found the last of the 12 men. They marched them back to North Carolina to the first tree. And they hung all 12. Guess who the guy that did that was? My next door neighbor, J.B. Lobb. My best friend, my next door neighbor, boyhood chum I grew up with. It was his great, 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 great grandpa. So, whatever you think, chance, whatever, 